The Loch Ness Monster is probably the most famous water monster in the world. But did you know that Nessie is not the only one? For example, Ogopogo is said to reside at Okanagan Lake. Chessie has been spotted in Chesapeake Bay. And of course, Champ, the Lake Champlain monster. Champ has been called the Nessie of the United States. Tons of sightings, including by Samuel D. Champlain, allegedly. Even in local Iroquois legends, where they talk about large snakes in Lake Champlain. There are lots of video evidence, and a photograph, of what looks like a large dinosaur-like creature in the water. Located between the borders of New York and Vermont, as well as parts of Canada, Lake Champlain is sometimes called the Sixth Great Lake. Though nowhere near the size of the actual Great Lakes, it is pretty big. 490 square miles in area, 170 miles long, and 14 miles wide at its widest area. The lake is also 400 feet deep. Safe to say, that isn't small. It also has a lot of fish. 93 species of fish live in the lake, including bass, catfish, trout, and other types. 21 species of amphibians, more than 300 species of birds, and 56 species of mammals. This differs from Loch Ness the more famous body of water that's supposedly home to a large lake monster. While there are fish and other animals around Loch Ness, they are not enough to sustain a population of large predators. But Lake Champlain seems to. I am not an expert, but the numbers for both seem to indicate that. Loch Ness has only 10 species of fish living in it, which is more likely a water monster would probably need a food source in the water to survive. While some aquatic animals do regularly kill and eat animals coming to the water for drinking, this wouldn't be the case here. Predators who do this kind of thing, like alligators and crocodiles, are ambush predators, specifically designed to blend into water and sneak up on prey. A large creature like Nessie or Champ would find this hard to do because the larger the predator, the harder ambush tactics are. The lake is named after Samuel D. Champlain, who, according to folklore, had seen the creature. According to legend, Samuel D. Champlain sighted the creature. He described it as a serpent that was thick as a barrel with a head like a horse. This description doesn't match what others claim it looks like. Also, it is more likely the description listed is completely false. In fact, this whole story of D. Champlain seeing Champ was taken from an article in 1970, where the author equated this passage from one of D. Champlain's journals as him seeing Champ. There is also a great abundance of many species of fish. Amongst the others, there is one called by the natives, Cherisaru, which is of various lengths. But the largest of them, as the tribes have told me, are from 8 to 10 feet long. I have seen some 5 feet long, which were as big as my thigh, and had a head as large as my two fists, with a snout 2 feet and a half long, and a double row of very sharp, dangerous teeth. Its body has a good deal the shape of the pike, but it is protected by scales of a silver silvery gray color, and so strong that a dagger could not pierce them. So yeah, nowhere in that excerpt describes seeing a creature that is serpent-like, that is thick as a barrel, with a horse-like head. That's because he wasn't writing about Champ. He was describing a gar. He never wrote about seeing Champ in his journals. And D. Champlain did keep extensive journals about everything he saw. Cryptozoologists believe that Champ is a living plesiosaur, a species of aquatic dinosaur that lived in the early Jurassic period. Long-necked, they had lungs and not gills. They ate mostly snails and clams as well as types of squids that were alive during that time. But these are more recent descriptions of Champ. 
In the past, in legends and folklore, Champ looked drastically different than modern descriptions. It is constantly referred to as serpent-like. There is a huge difference between a long neck aquatic dinosaur and a serpent-like creature. The Iroquois called Champ a horned serpent or a giant snake. So the popular description of the creature being like a plesiosaur is a more modern thing. In the past up until the 1900s, the creature was more described like being a snake. Champ sightings go back a ways, to before Europeans showed up on the shores of the Americas. The Abenaki and the Iroquois both told stories of a large snake living in the lake. They would warn others in their tribes not to disturb the waters of Lake Champlain, because it would wake the beast within. When the French arrived, the Abenaki even warned them of a great horned serpent that lived in the lake's waters. While some would laugh this off as indigenous people's wild folk tales, some would claim to see something lurking under the surface that filled them with dread. In 1819, the weirdest sighting happened that was chronicled in the newspaper, the Plattsburgh Republican. A man only identified as Captain Crum was sailing off a scow off of Bulwaga Bay. 200 yards away, he saw something surface from the water. Crum estimated that what this thing was, was 187 feet long, black, with sturgeon and billfish following it. Even though he was 200 yards away, he claimed the thing had three teeth and eyes the color of peeled onions which is one of the weirdest ways to describe the color of eyes. He also claimed that the creature had a belt of red on its neck and a white star shape on its forehead. My opinion on this is someone is telling tall tales. To be able to describe a creature even with this much detail from 200 yards is highly unlikely. Unless that person is Superman, which I highly doubt Captain Crumb was Superman. In 1873, a railroad crew supposedly saw the head of an enormous serpent rising out of the lake. Unlike the 1819 sighting though, the workers claimed that this creature had silver scales on its head. In July of 1873, a sheriff named Nathan H. Mooney claimed to have seen an enormous snake in the water, estimating that this snake was between 25 to 35 feet long. And also, in 1873, P.T. Barnum got involved, offering a $50,000 reward for the creature's hide. The creature had been sighted so much by 1992, ferries would be filled with people eager to sight the monster. By 1992, roughly 160 sightings were reported with over 600 people claiming to see Champ. But we need to backtrack a bit, to 1977 to one of the more famous sightings of this creature. Much like Nessie in Loch Ness, Champ has a photo that is supposedly of it. That photo is called the Mansi Photograph. In 1977, the Mansi family went to the beach off the shores of Lake Champlain. The children were playing and enjoying the water, when Sandra Mansi noticed a disturbance in the lake. She cried for her children to get out of the water, which they did. She rushed and grabbed her camera and took this photo. The creature in the photo looks to have a long neck and small head. It's turning as if it's swimming away. It is a much clearer photo than that of Loch Ness, but not everything is what it seems. First, let's look at Sandra Mansi. Her claims have been slightly contradictory when it comes to this photograph. Her story about that day has never changed, but how the photo was made public changed a lot. Her first story is that after she had the film developed, she hid the photo in a family album and lost the negative. She had claimed to be afraid to talk about it and rarely showed the photo. That was until a friend suggested that she share the photo with a cryptozoologist in 1981, which she did. What happened to the negatives is the first point of contention. Sandra would claim that she always got rid of negatives, but her husband claimed that the negatives were buried or burned because the memory of that day was too disturbing. If that's the case, why keep the photograph and not get rid of that too? Sandra also has not been accurate with hiding the photo in a family album. She also claimed it had been pinned up in the home for all to see. So that goes against them having bad memories of that day, because I do not know anyone who would keep something that would remind them of a bad memory where they can see it anytime they want. The location the photo was taken, Sandra claimed 
seemed to not remember. Yet then stated that she did know where it was, but was afraid someone was going to go kill the creature if she leaked the location. A cryptid investigator that talked to Sandra claimed that she was more eager to financially gain from the photo than getting to the bottom of what was in the photo. Hell, one of her co-workers in 1979 claimed that she was going to be Sandra's publicist. Oh, and it wasn't a monster in the photo. It wasn't even a living creature. It was a stump that was floating on the surface, which Sandra herself helped identify when she said that the creature had barky skin. Though this was debunked, it hasn't stopped sightings of the creature in Lake Champlain. In fact, there are plenty of footage and photos out there claiming to be of Champ, or something in the waters of Lake Champlain. But what could it be that people are seeing? The simplest explanation is that there is actually nothing being seen in the waters of Lake Champlain. Like with the Mansi photograph, it might just be a trick of the eye. You see the water moving, and sometimes it looks like something has surfaced when really it's just the water itself. We see that a lot with Loch Ness. People will take video suggesting something is moving in the water only for it to be just your eyes playing tricks on you. Maybe the old stories are a mixture of a trick of the water, tall tales, and a misidentified species of aquatic animals like the lake sturgeon, which is a large fish with silver coloring. At 200 pounds and six and a half feet in length, these things are large. Not as large as a serpent-like creature, but large. There have been documented attacks in Lake Champlain though. I didn't feature any of them for one reason. I don't think that any of them have been attributed to Champ, but just in case, we're gonna cover them now. And there's a show that covered this, River Monsters. Jeremy Wade is a biologist and fisherman. This episode focused on attacks in Lake Champlain and not on Champ itself. The focus was on attacks on swimmers in the lake. He finds that the lamprey could be responsible for these attacks. Lampreys are blood-sucking fish and are really weird looking. They're also serpent-like, but they're not really that big of creatures. So the only thing that they would have in common with Champ is that they're serpent-like. With looking through these explanations, I have to go with people misidentifying how the water moves and objects in the water as Champ. It makes the most sense. Sturgeon are large, but not as large as a 25 to 35 foot serpent-like creature. Lampreys are creepy looking serpent-like fish, but unfortunately they are too small. Yet a piece of wood floating in a lake gave rise to the most famous photograph of the creature, while others have either been a trick of the eye or a hoax. So I can't name an animal this could possibly be. With the abundance of wildlife in and around the lake, attacks on humans can even be attributed to known creatures. So in the case of Champ, I have to say it's not real. Unfortunately, there is no real proof that Champ exists. Halloween. It has been seen throughout the world and given different names. Footprints found in mud or snow. Hairs found. Photos, videos, and sounds all recorded. It's known as the Yeti, the Skunk Ape, the Yowie, and Sasquatch. But the most famous cryptid is known more by the name Bigfoot. Till then. <laughs>